So grateful to be here in the New Zealand evening and Tash Mitch in London's early morning is here with us to talk about sacred geometry. This is such a fascinating and um, intrinsically valuable conversation. I've been intuitively learning about sacred geometry for quite a few years, uh, but I really had this yearning to connect with someone that I trusted, loved and admired to really dive in. And of course, Tash Mitch is the person. So grateful for her wisdom, her love, and her divine embodiment. So we welcome you into this divine conversation, Tash. And viewers, thank you for joining us for this Sacred Geometry Conversation. Oh, I absolutely adore you. I can't tell you. I mean, I think I tell you everything. You've got this energy and just this beauty that comes straight from the heart. So thank you so much for actually inviting me into this conversation. I'm really excited to be having this conversation with you. I'd love to hear when you first stumbled across sacred geometry, because when I was reflecting today, getting giddy with excitement about having this conversation with you, I remember being in a maths class at 15 and seeing a picture on the wall of um, numeric patterns that were represented in nature. And I don't really resonate with numbers. But what I noticed was the patterning spoke to me in a way that was very familiar. And I didn't resonate at all with the numbers and what they were trying to um, explain about prime numbers and repetitive patterns. What I saw was the movement of the shapes. And it was from that time that my sacred geometry study began in nature. And I just began observing um, the replication of these divine patterns that I knew had more significance than I could comprehend at the time. Um, and I think you just slowly, you stumble across it more and more and more. What about you, beautiful? Well, for me, it was more the symbology. It was like the symbol. It was because um, always when you're working, and energy work has always been a huge element of, of me and my work, and it's really excited me. It's everything that drives me forward is the energy work. But because it's not... Um, what, what you might call a commercial element, but it's not like something, <laughs> you know, it, it, it tends to have its niches when you talk about energy, to talk freely about energy in a way um, that you're not holding back. Um, it tends to sort of like, you've got niches, niche of people that you can speak to in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, you have to find ways to articulate energy to a lot of people. Beautiful. Um, so it was a construct for communication for you, beautiful. Yeah, wow. but it was a construct. It was a construct for myself initially, mm -hmm. and then it, it became a construct that I use in my work as well to almost bring people's imagination, vision, um, understanding into how energy works, basically. Of course you would say that. Um, I, I'm not an energy worker. So for me, I just uh, am all about the world of emotion. So, so powerful for me to hear you say that, that it became a paradigm wherewith you could communicate with other people because energy is very difficult to talk about it. I'm more attuned and aware of it than I've ever been. You know, you get more exposed. and But I think you're so right. I, I guess where I'm so in awe, you've got an amazing write-up on your website and I'm definitely going to be able to put a link to that for anyone who would like to learn more about sacred geometry. Your write-up blew my mind because um, our beautiful, I guess, common ground is chakra alignment. And that was what first birthed our friendship. And I really am in awe of what you're able to teach and convey to people about how they can align themselves. So you're actually describing how people can use sacred geometry in every one of their chakras to be able to bring in profound healing and alignment. So if you're watching this, please check out that link. It'll be, it'll be listed below. I guess I'm really curious about the implications of sacred geometry. Um, I think I think the major thing that first stood out for me was I intrinsically comprehended that curves and circles were feminine yeah. and that um, angles and lines were masculine. And I remember staring at this image for quite some time and I remember that intuitively I really felt spirit directing me to watch and look for the intersecting components. Mm -hmm. Those moments where, you know, the angle of the square would intersect with the arc of the circle. And, it, mm -hmm. and, it, and I, I watched in some of these sacred geometric patterns that I was, you know, being exposed to, and I saw the intersection happening in this rhythmic modulating, you know, it would be like, mm -hmm. poof, 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 and I was like, oh, that's creation. 
That's the feminine and the masculine uniting to form life. And I was just like, oh. And I remember it was just so big for me to be able to see it energetically, I guess, like you're saying, that what we know in our, you know, our own sacred relationships with our partners, this is being reflected back to us in sacred geometry. Well, it, it, you know, the thing that really excited me, I mean, when you were asking me about when I first came across sacred geometry, the first symbol that I really came across was a six point star. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like it really, I honed in on that to the point where I actually got it actually inked on my body. Wow. It was like, it was so powerful for me. Mm-hmm. The, the symbol represented um, the unity between the divine and, and, and matter, the divine and okay. the divine yeah. and matter, you know, yes. the two tracks. One points upwards to the divine, one points downwards to matter, and they're actually completely interlocked and intertwined. Um, and for me, you know, the, the, the symbology of that was just absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. But after coming across a six point star, um, sacred geometry didn't really kind of really grab me until probably about two years ago when I did, um, well, no, actually even less, probably about a year ago when I did, I did a a 180 degree turn in terms of my career um, and ended up going into, into energy work and and coaching and really combining those two and really honing and focusing that. Um, And I was having a conversation with a friend and I remember sort of saying to her, Actually, you know, she was she was trying to describe a, a system that she was coming up with. And I was saying to her, actually, have you thought about representing it in circles? And so I ended up drawing the circles <laughs> for her. And then she was going, well, that's the seed of life. And I'm like, oh. And <laughs> Trust you to channel a divine symbol. Hey, no, check this out. I'm fully organically originally creating this right here, right now. Oh, that's a seed of life. <laughs> And that started the journey. And you know, like, basically, I don't know for you, but for example, if you're going to buy a canary yellow BMW car, for example, mm-hmm. you, wouldn't, you, for, you wouldn't see them until you decided to buy them. And then suddenly mm-hmm. you'll be seeing them everywhere. Yeah, and you say to someone, oh my God, you know, it's kind of like there's so many of them. Yeah. It was a bit like that with the symbols. Once I'd actually drawn that first symbol, it was just popping out. Yeah. I was waking up in the morning with like lines and circles. Mm, course. Wow. And it was only later that it came through that actually I was meant to use the symbols to represent the chakras and to really bring people into how their energy works with the chakras. Wow. Oh, that's incredible. I'm so grateful for your willingness to be a pure channel, you know, because the information, it's, it's so profound for us, but then the application for other people when you can guide and direct them to the symbols that they need. So we're, we're talking um, the, the seed. So we've got egg, seed, and then the flower. So the egg of life, the seed of life, the flower of life. And um, I, think, I think this happened to me just a few weeks ago where I was looking at this. And my children love picking flowers for me. It's like their, their favorite thing. They always pick flowers and give them to me. And my little girl picked a flower and gave it to me. And I looked at it. You know, I have these, these profound moments that you don't intend But I looked at it and I saw it as a reflection. I was like, this is not really a flower. This is a representation of the divine imprint that was planted in the seed that is the seed of a seed of a seed of a seed of a seed. And it really dropped in. And and I guess that's where I, I wanted to kind of see if you wanted to come for a little play in this conversation that, um, Everything is a reflection of the original patterning. And for me personally, the implications of sacred geometry have led me home to my own frequency. Mm. That what they teach me is that when you figure out the truth of who you are, the frequency, the energy, um, the radiating aura, whatever, whatever words you want to give to that, your truth, your light, is that you can replicate it anywhere. And so what's been fascinating for me is I feel like I've really come home to myself this year. I've come home to my husband's, the land that he grew up in, his whenua here in New Zealand. Whenua is, means your land, your birth home, place of birth. And we've renovated his childhood home. So I've really come home in so many ways this year. This is the first time we've ever had a home. 
And what I've realized now is that on Instagram, I know exactly how to reflect myself in colors and font. When it comes to having a shoot done, I know exactly what colors to use and what movements to represent who I am. Mm. And for me now, you know, I think about branding and I think about these amazing pop stars that, you know, if you hear Rihanna, if you hear her voice, you know it's her singing. If you hear Adele, you go, that's Adele. Bruno Mars, you don't need the radio guy to tell you that's a Bruno Mars song. When 24K Magic came out, we go, this is Bruno Mars' new magic, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think this has massive implications for us that we're thinking that these people are icons and that they're branded and that they're, they're pop stars. There's something more profound going on here. These people are finding their essence and they're imparting it and they're sharing it, not so that we can replicate their essence, which is, I think, where we get self-betrayed. Mm, yes. What they're inviting us to do is to find the truth of our essence so that we can replicate it over whatever platform we happen to be standing on. Yeah. Well, it's, it's really interesting because the sacral chakra for me, um, the sacral and also the solar plexus represents our, our relationship with people on the outside world, our intimate relationships, but it also represents our our relationship with ourselves and so this, the the solar plexus is our relationship with ourselves and then the um, sacral chakra is the relationships that we have with other people intimately and the thing is it's like if we don't have a sense of worth if our worth is in, and our sense of self-empowerment isn't strong we tend to kind of like really go out into the world looking for for people mm -hmm. who have what we don't have that's yeah. basically looking for you yeah. know and if we don't realize it what we tend to do is we put them on a pedestal as having what I don't have yes but ultimately what you're doing is you're looking for people to mirror that thing that you feel inside of you to mirror that thing that wants to be birthed that wants to be expanded <laughs> that wants to be seen that wants to be heard in you that's what you're doing do you know what I mean yeah that's right <laughs> understand that because yes. I remember doing a Pinterest board of female icons for example and it was people that I really looked up to and then that information dropped in and I was like oh so each of this woman has a seed of me so what yeah. am I looking for yeah. do you know what I mean what absolutely you see what I mean absolutely when I talk about this I call it the light shadow so we know shadow work is seeing our disowned parts reflected back to us. Mm. But when we do light shadow work, we're looking for our repressed or rejected light reflected back to us in others. And people like Alicia Keys was mm. someone that I really admired her and admired her and admired her. And I'm like, you are showing me myself. Thank you. That is a pretty big compliment to give myself. But do you know what I mean? Her connection with her sensuality, her freedom of expression, her innate embodiment of creativity and divinity. She's going, Lacey, look at me because I am you. Yes. And she stands and she'll allow us to honor her because she knows that it's her gift to the world to bring people into greater connection with their own truth and with their own divinity. Obviously, people can use this sort of power the other way to disempower others. Hmm. Um, but I go, it's all to bless us. Everything's here to bless us. You give your power away to someone and then they use and abuse you and then that's great. Other people will stand up in their glory and in their light, India Ari, and she will help us to see that that is who I am too. I went to her concert. I, I was so eager to buy tickets for my 30th birthday. I ended up with front row tickets and the woman got up and she said, before I can start this concert, I just need to let you know I've had a really rough day. So I actually need to verbally, emotionally release that before I'm actually going to be able to be singing. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you are emotionally releasing and transmuting in front of my very eyes. That was better than the concert. This vulnerable yeah. woman showing up going, I've been so hurt by this and I don't know what to do but to cry with you. And I'm just like, this is what's happening is that these patterns and these people who are embodying their own frequency, this is all helping us to come home to our truth, inviting us to own the uniqueness of who we are. Because like you said, people are showing you the seed of who you are, but they'll show you an aspect. You, they'll show you a component. So you can go, you know, who are my top three icons on Facebook? And they're going to be a reflection of who you are. 
Yeah. The other thing, though, is that, you know, we live in a world that puts people in um, fishbowls, for example. So, you know, all, all those people that you spoke about have got a public persona <laughs> and have got a brand. Mm -hmm. And so and that brand is designed to make you feel like you know them. So, mm -hmm. like, literally, one of the things that I mean, because I ended up um, in, in 2012, I ended up writing this book that took me into meeting a lot of the people that I idolized in the natural health wow. industry mm -hmm. and world. Mm -hmm. And it was people whose books I was reading, who I'd studied, mm -hmm. whose works, who were pioneers. Mm -hmm. And I put these people up on this pedestal, like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm breathing the same air, I'm breathing the same air. <laughs> and then I met them. Mm -hmm. and the thing Bit of humanity. <laughs> The thing that drove home more and more and more to me with each of these people that I met was that they're human beings who have a great passion. Mm. They're human beings who have such a strong passion that the passion is driving them forward. Mm. And we are actually riffing on their passion. Mm. But like literally what we're riffing on is that thing that we want to find within ourselves, yes. you know? Yes. And that really drove that, that message home. So mm. as much as I admire and I love mm -hmm. the fact that people stand up and they actually really um, own an aspect mm -hmm. of who they are and they yeah. present that to us. Yes. Um, it's really been brought home that what they're presenting, because I'm projecting, I don't know, you That's know, it's, it. you know, we don't, we don't go to sleep with Bruno Mars in the next. <laughs> <laughs> not, not right now anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like we didn't sit down and have dinner with him or anything. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes we get we get this sense of such a sense of intimacy that it feels yeah. like that. It feels like, like we know them deeply. Mm. We don't, you know. What we know <laughs> is what we've, actually, what we've actually projected onto them of that thing that we desire for ourselves. Yeah. I do feel like I know Mariah Carey really well, though. <laughs> I mean, she led me home to my vulnerability. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> my feediness. Oh, thank you, Mariah. Thank you. That's the beauty of it. But what she leads you home to is what are you going to stand up for yourself? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, what, totally. What are you going to actually really plant and embody and um, root and ground your being into? Do you know what I mean? That's, yeah. she, that's what she's bringing you home to, basically. Yeah, exactly. And I love that awakened perspective of owning that there is no above below. We are all human beings on our own journey. It's all in perfect timing. Some people are reflecting aspects stronger and that's just a privilege for us to be able to witness, to be able to use that connection with light to invite ourselves deeper into the embodiment of it. So I feel like this is a natural point in the conversation to talk about, am I saying this right? The Taurus, the Taurus, oh, how do you say it? Taurus, yeah. Taurus. Yeah. So when you reflected that sacred geometric image with the crown chakra, is that right? Or did you go third eye? Crown. Crown. Yeah. That, oh, oh, there was just so much in that because I remember when I was first learning about chakras, really the access points of perception and consciousness. And so... It's so profound for anyone on a self-development, self-healing, self-actualization journey to be able to recognize that the reality that you're manifesting before your very eyes is a byproduct of the beliefs and perceptions and, and ideas that you're committed to holding on to believing. Well, everything is vibration. And that's the thing that always excited me about energy, energy work. Everything is vibration. And what the, what the actual, and when I say everything is vibration, what I mean is um, our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings, the essence of who we are creates a template within our energetic field that actually goes out and finds its match. Mm -hmm. And so for example, if, if you, um, so, you know, sometimes people sort of like feel like they're victims because something was done onto them, for mm -hmm. example, or somebody did something to them or, mm -hmm. you know, um, they, they were put into a, pow a powerless situation, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard sometimes to convey the message that vibrationally you cannot experience anything that wasn't a magnetic vibrational match to you. Otherwise, you're just repellent. Do you know what I mean? Totally. It's like you're 
energy would be like a like a thunderstorm that repels that. Mm -hmm. So for you for you to have found that match means that there was an energetic blueprint within yourself that mm -hmm. clicked in mm -hmm. and matched that. Mm -hmm. And this is what um, sacred geometry re really brings us home to is that we are made of energetic blueprints. Everything, every thought, every feeling that we have, every emotion that we have creates a blueprint of some description. So when we actually talk about the Taurus, for example, which is a series of revolving circles, I mean, the Taurus is just revolving circles that runs on a 360 degree axis of just like circles that are, are revolving and evolving. It's actually our energy that is evolving and revolving. We're continuously bringing new things in. We're continuously digesting what we have. We're continuously letting go and releasing of the things that we don't need. And that's what the Taurus represents for us, you know. Um, and putting that in the crown, seeing that in the crown was really kind of um, the seed, basically. When, when, when the divine communicates with us, for example, when we communicate on that universal level, we bring things in and then it, it, it evolves and revolves in the mind. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, that's what the symbology of it is for me. You know, that, that was what yeah. the symbology, that's what I was seeing with the symbology of the Taurus. And the Taurus in itself is actually, it, it, it um, the actual symbol is the human energetic field. Mm -hmm. So the Taurus in itself goes in through the crown and then goes out through the feet. And then it's kind of like a, 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 a series of revolving circles that represents a, you know, a human field. Um, but yeah, it came through for the crown chakra for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just so incredible. I can, I can see it and it locks in so much for me because mm -hmm. as an emotional healer, I call myself a heart healer. I always go, what are you seeing? What is the universe presenting? Because it's reflecting what's emanating from within you. So if you can capture that reflection and understand what you're believing through that mirror, yes. then we can be guided to, through pain to find the wounding, to be able to invite the divine to clarify what your truth is. Every time I have a healing session with a client, I go within seven days you will see a reflection of the new, new truth that you've received shown back to you to yes. confirm that it's healed. So when, you know, if, if, if you haven't seen the Taurus, check out the shape. And the way I like to think of it is like an apple. You know how it kind of comes down and then it goes back out or, or butterfly wings or, you know, but when you see it, you know how like on, you know, YouTube, there's some of these amazing 3D and you just go, I don't even have enough hands to represent that shape. Um, but you described it beautifully. And for me, that shape embodies the process of self-healing and self-reflection and self-actualization being able to use the mirror to see what needs to be healing then use the mirror to be able to confirm that it's been healed and to be able to evolve through our perception and open up to hold more and more light and love <laughs> this is so exciting i just knew it would be so profound and beautiful to learn from you that you know the the egg and the seed and the flower you know, what does the flower of life represent for you, Tash? The flower of life represents, for me, um, infinity mm -hmm. to a large degree. Yeah. It represents the fact, and I always see the flower of life as um, the seed of one circle replicating itself. Mm -hmm to create and that's the thing is it's like when i bring people's attention to their thought patterns for example when we have a thought um we have fleeting thoughts that can come in and come out and we don't really pay them a lot of attention um but even those thoughts can be quite creative um, because it just depends on what energetic match they were meeting at the time. So we can say something like a throwaway comment, for example, that for us, it didn't really mean anything. For the, for the person in front of us, it wounded them deeply, or it actually, they received it and embraced it and it allowed them to feel themselves deeply. Mm -hmm. um, and for us, it was just something that just came out of our mouths. And so like, you know, it's, it's, it's that sense of, you know, when somebody comes up to you and says, you changed my life. And mm -hmm. you're like, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> 
because in that moment you had said something that it wasn't a deep connection for you. It was just something that you were honoring of the moment. And for them, it was their moment personified, you know? Yeah. And so that's, that's what our, our thoughts can do. But when we have those loop thoughts, you know, that thought that basically is kind of like it's in our subconscious and it goes round and round and round. And we, to the point where we, we haven't even realized that we've been thinking that thing yeah, for the last five hours. <laughs> You know what I mean? In yeah. different guys, we've been thinking the same thought. Mm -hmm. For me, that represents infinity of, mm -hmm. of you know, that, that kind of like flower of life and mm -hmm. it blossoms and it blooms and it creates in mm -hmm. all aspects. Mm -hmm. So for example, when we have those loopy thoughts, when we have those thoughts that are replicated over and over, every energetic, um, every energetic sort of, you know, match that we meet, we, we imprint that thought onto if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. So for example, we'll have a conversation with someone in the background, we've got this loopy thought going on. It imprints itself onto that conversation. Mm -hmm. We go outside, we go down to the supermarket, for example, we pick something up and then the thought's still looping. We're, we're imprinting our, this thought into all aspects of our life, into all aspects of our being. And this is the infinity of the seed of life for me. Do you know what I mean? Because once mm -hmm. we've imprinted, it goes off into into the universe and creates its own thing, you know? Mm. So I guess what I'm hearing from what you're saying is that by consciously becoming aware of our thoughts and our feelings, of course, I would have to say, and is how that... how powerful they are. And how powerful they are at creating our reality, that they're actually the foundation of creation, yeah. that we get the privilege of claiming ourselves as creators, Yes. And that's really what sacred geometry has invited me home to, that I am the center of this universe and that so are you for your universe. And we're all converging. There's these spaces like right now you and I are co-creating together and we're converging our two universes. So mm -hmm. what I am is imprinting upon you and what you are is imprinting upon me yes. and that it self-replicates to infinity. I, I love hearing your words. You said the flower of life represents infinity and um, creativity to you. And it's so interesting that my words are um, abundance and prosperity. Yes. Because it's, this, it's the same thing. You're creating whatever it is that you're creating. Infinity. I go, I want to invite people home to creating prosperity and abundance because I believe that's our natural state. When you understand the essence of who you are, when you can claim your gifts, your true identity, the, the true self beyond the wounding and the pain, that's when you create this rich, abundant life because you're in a vibrational alignment and everything is, I've stopped setting goals. I don't even intend anymore. I just feel into myself and I go, oh, what's wanting to come through me right now? Yeah. What, what wants to be had through me? And yeah. then when I feel it and I bring it forward, like I won't even say anything and someone will come up to me and go, I want to do this with you. And that's how it's so real for me now. Like I don't even have to promote offers. As soon as I wanted to mentor empaths, empaths found me and mm. sought self-healing so that they could guide other people to more healing. And I went, oh. this is the implications for branding and marketing and business obviously are profound. But, you know, for me, I think it's just so incredible to be able to claim the conscious reality that we are creating the future in this moment and yet there's a, a there's an irony here there's the paradox is is that you're consciously creating it in this moment and yet there is a divine blueprint embedded in your being mm. that you are blessed and doomed to play out whether you like it or not yeah i've, I've had that conversation and that's the thing <laughs> because i i feel like um I feel like we we are creators, and it, this this world, for example, hasn't really been um, manufactured in a way. And I feel that <laughs> some as aspects of this world is deeply manufactured, but manufactured in a way that empowers all human beings. Mm -hmm. So we have elements where people haven't been taught to embrace their goddessness or their godness. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, to embrace the um, powerful elements of themselves, to embrace that element that's deeply divine and that is actually makes us an infinite being 
really in reality where we sit right now. Mm -hmm. We haven't really been em uh, taught to embrace that. Do you know what I mean? No, no, it's not in the curriculum. <laughs> So when we actually when we actually start to embrace that, we start to see what creator really means. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah. Creator doesn't really mean that we are um, doomed to play out a certain element of of patterns. It means that we can create patterns. You know yeah, yeah. that we are uh, we are creators. We're we're able to to change a pattern, to disrupt mm -hmm. the pattern. Mm -hmm. And once we disrupt a pattern, we disrupt that pattern throughout the whole fabric of, of yes, the universe. Time, space, yes. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? So it's yeah. kind of like when you really deeply embrace that, mm -hmm. um, yes, the, the, then, then we truly, truly embrace what it means to be a creator. Mm. No, I love it. I love the clarity that's coming through because you're going – do you know what I mean? We're not, we're not doomed to play out these things. I guess, I guess what I'm kind of dropping into is that when we, when we own that we're a creator, there's a way of me authentically, organically, intuitively creating that's unique to everybody else that I'll always eventually come home to. Yeah. That, that's my divine patterning. And, and it's kind of this, this beautiful life is, is a time to be able to find, find that essence and truth of who we are that I think is inevitable for every soul. Mm -hmm. I think just like that little Daisy was the byproduct and manifestation and replication of that divine imprint in the seed of the seed of the seed of the seed, of the seed mm -hmm. that that's what each of us are, that we're seeing all the different options for what we can create. And we can use it as an opportunity to be able to come home to the truth and power of what is intuitively and authentically. I can't, I'm looking for another word, but I don't think it, it exists in the human language yet. But it's yeah. our truth. I think there's, there's a whole vocabulary that um, I don't know that is the truth language that we can't kind of talk right now. But I... I I'm so grateful that I am in companionship and friendship with someone who's found their truth and, and found their flower, sweetheart. I'm so in awe of your willingness to be receptive to the light and the wisdom that was wanting to come through you, to be able to be one of those divinely embodied souls that recognizes her power and invites other people to come home into it as well. I love that you just said that because everything that you've just said, when we're talking about energetic matches, when we're talking about energetic, um, you know, finding resonance, we're talking about you're reflecting that to me. You know, you're reflecting that to me in everything that you do, in everything that you are, and everything that you present to the world. You reflect that to me. Um, and even with like, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing this, this headpiece that's just like blasting <laughs> out this energy, you're reflecting that because this to me is, is sort of saying that it's so connected to the heart. Mm -hmm. So I, I see the third eye there with this beauty, but I actually am sort of seeing the energy that's connected to the heart with it. Mm -hmm. um, you are an exceptional woman, you know, you, you have this, um, this radiance about you and this this beauty about you that allows yourself to be vulnerable, mm. allows yourself to show exactly who you are, mm. but also allows the heart to sing, allows the heart to speak. And the heart has got many nuances. You know, the heart can be powerful um, and amazing and empowered, but it could also be vulnerable. It could be sad. It could be kind of, you know, that, that, that thing that, that basically um, needs to be acknowledged, needs to be mm. seen, needs to be heard. Mm. just that for it to just blossom and release mm. and when we're authentic and standing in our power enough to allow all of those nuances to come forward and allow people to see them for me you that's what you represent in everything that you do with your work and so as well I'm deeply honored mm. deeply honored Aww. Well, this feels like the natural conclusion and, and what an honor to share in this conversation. We hope that this uh, conversation about sacred geometry and all other wonderful, glorious topics that have been included um, has been deeply, deeply valuable for your whole soul. We would love to hear what you think of it. Um, send us comments and let us know. And we hope that you can use some of what we've expressed and shared to more closely find your frequency, your truth, your resonance, and come home to the power that you are. So, mwah, mwah, mwah.